I don't think we're alone in saying that this is what games should feel like. No matter who you are or what rating you have, you probably feel something from seeing this. Most of us will never get to see the BlizzCon stage, but that doesn't stop us from competing. From the moment we pick up our first controller or press login for the first time, some of us are on a journey to compete. But what the hell is this? Look, it's no surprise by now that gearing in WoW feels awful. There have been plenty of people who have made countless forum posts and videos describing the problems in PvP gearing, and it can get pretty toxic. Sometimes gearing is compared to running on an endless hamster wheel, and sometimes it seems like character progression is designed to never end. But what if the problem is deeper than we think? Is it actually possible to make gearing fun and exciting? And what can our current system teach us about ourselves? We're here today to talk about gearing in WoW and why it feels so terrible. We will be thinking about what makes games feel competitive and fair, and how our own psychology can help us understand why gearing in Shadowlands makes us feel miserable. So stick around, because we will be looking at how gearing worked in previous expansions, and how the past can help us make the game better for current and future generations of players. One important feature of games is just how quickly they give you something to do. You might have to sit through a few cinematics or loading screens, but eventually you will see some sort of start button. And it's no accident that some of the most memorable games are the ones that get you instantly immersed in gameplay. But one feature of single player games is that they are designed to end, and at some point you will feel that the game is complete. And although some people have invented ways to make these games go on forever, most players are comfortable setting down their controller once the credits start rolling. And in many ways, our life is divided in the same way. We find projects, we complete them, we set them down, and we start new ones. Some of our happiest moments are when we complete really big projects, and in many ways, we find reasons to celebrate leveling up. But what happens when you add another player to your game? And then what happens when you add a few million more and make your game go on forever? Is it still possible to find a sense of achievement? The answer is clearly yes, because for anyone who has played any MMO, there are definitely moments that make us feel proud. And we feel even better when we share these moments with friends. At its core, this is how games build communities. Just like in real life, these communities create celebrities, and we respect people without even knowing them if we feel like they have achieved a lot. Like any other game, World of Warcraft makes us feel good by giving us projects to complete, and one of the earliest projects you encounter is your own gear. Remember, progression makes us feel good, and gear progression has been in the game forever. But why now does it feel like gearing sucks? I bet you are wondering what Overwatch has to do with WoW gearing. I promise you, they are related, so keep it in the back of your mind for just a moment. Before we see why gearing feels bad now, let's take a journey back into the past. Up until Wrath of the Lich King, there was pretty much only one of every piece of gear. If you needed your tier 2 helmet, there was only one version and you knew exactly where to go get it. In Wrath and Cataclysm, some gear was split into different item levels depending on how difficult it was to acquire. There were both normal, heroic, and eventually raid finder versions of gear in PvE, and then normal and tier 2 weapons in PvP, which required specific ratings. What this meant is that if you wanted a piece of gear, you knew exactly how to get it, and with enough skill, luck, and time, you could complete your character. Progression seemed to have an end. But something happened in Mists of Pandaria that would change gearing forever. Sticking out in blood red text in the 5.2 patch notes was a new system of gearing called Thunder Forging. Items from both normal and heroic raids could now sometimes drop with increased stats. On its surface, this seemed like a harmless change, and it was being marketed as something that was going to make loot drops more interesting overall, and make repeated kills more exciting and rewarding. So how could this become a problem? Remember that up until this point, gear was only divided into difficulty categories. If you wanted your best in slot piece, you just needed to join a raid and cross your fingers. But now, there was a new element of chance. Not only did you hope your piece dropped, but now you had to hope it would be Thunderforged. If you wanted that feeling of completeness, that sense of achievement, and the end to your progression, you now needed some extra luck. While Thunderforging was being introduced in WoW, something was happening across the entire gaming industry. All across Twitch and YouTube, millions of viewers would tune in to watch professional gamers, sometimes even the best players in the world, 
open loot boxes. The loot box system was being introduced across multiple Blizzard games around the middle of the decade. Hearthstone did this in the form of packs. At the beginning of every expansion, millions of viewers would watch their favorite streamer open pack after pack for hours. The average pack was relatively boring, but sometimes players would get insanely lucky. And in many ways, WoW was already a loot box, but developers needed a way to hop on this trend. Remember, we like being able to finish projects and start new ones. Players wanted to finish their characters, and in the past, it was possible to do this. But when some players would finish, they would just log off. So the journey began to make your project last as long as possible. Maybe if there was more luck involved in getting gear, players would stay logged on. Fortunately for game designers, psychology had already figured this out almost a century before World of Warcraft even existed. And they did it using pigeons. Early studies in behaviorism showed that if you wanted to train a pigeon to do something, you better offer it some rewards. You can reinforce its behavior, like hitting a button, by giving it some treats. But eventually, the pigeon realizes this pattern, so it only pecks when it wants to. But what happens when you add a bit of RNG to the button? What if the treat isn't rewarded every time, but left up to chance? It turns out the pigeon starts interacting with the button more. Suddenly, the button becomes a game. The reward becomes more enticing. This is the same reason why gambling is addictive. The rewards are random, and this makes players want to interact even more. And this also explains why we stay logged into WoW. The game designers weren't wrong. Thunderforging does make loot more exciting when we get the piece we want. But what if that never happens? I bet you're wondering by now what Pigeons, Loot Boxes, and Tyler1 have to do with Shadowlands PvP. And for that, we have to take one more step into an expansion that was built a bit different. Thunderforging had evolved in Mists of Pandaria to Warforging and Titanforging, and then eventually to a new system called Corruption, introduced in Battle for Azeroth. Just like before, this system was marketed as creating moments of excitement and player choice, and that previous systems made it difficult for characters to feel complete. So, was Corruption the answer to giving players a sense of completeness? Let's see what it takes to get one best-in-slot piece with this new system. First, you will need to make sure your piece has the right corruption on it. Let's assume you want this one. There are 19 corruptions total, so you better hope you get the right one. But wait, there are three tiers for this corruption, so hopefully you proc tier 3. That's a 1 in 3 chance. Okay, okay, so if you want infinite stars with a tier 3 corruption, that is a 1 in 19 multiplied by 1 in 3, so that's a 1 in 57 chance your piece will be best in slot. Wait. No, because pieces have gem sockets, so this gets doubled to 114. So if you want your absolute best in slot piece with tier 3 corruption to drop in a mythic raid, there is a 1 in 114 chance you will get it, and that is assuming that it drops. But this is different than gambling, right? Remember how in Wrath and Cataclysm there were only 2 or 3 versions of every piece? In BFA, with 15 Mythic Dungeon difficulties, 19 Corruptions, 2 possibilities for Gem Sockets, and 4 different Tertiary Stats, there could be over 2,000 combinations of a single item, and that doesn't even include Corruption Tiers. And by the way, many of your best in slot pieces in PvP came from Mythic Dungeons and Raids. Completing your character this rate seemed impossible. Remember, we like to finish projects, but now instead of needing to search for a few puzzle pieces, you needed to search for thousands to be fully complete. But, as fate would have it, there was one easy solution to all of our problems. Hey there, this is Blizzard Entertainment, your number one source for knowing what is fun and exciting. Remember that old gearing system where you had to farm honor and then manually buy your best in slot piece? <laughs> that was no fun at all. Shadowlands brings new excitement to your character development. All you need to do is queue up Battleground and you will be in the action quickly. <coughs> 
Do that a few more times while grinding Renown for 24 hours and you will now have access to our new upgrade system where you spend your hard earned honor pressing this button 7 times so you can finally queue Arena. Now isn't that exciting? You will be queuing into people 20 item levels higher than you but not to worry because that's just a skill issue. Hey, uh, wait a minute, where did you get that picture? Oh, your friends are quitting? Who needs friends when you can do this every week? Oh, this looks like fun. Hey, don't throw that away. We gave that to you. Wait, stop. Anyway, this is Blizzard Entertainment signing off, hoping that you stay logged on forever. Not because you want to, but because you have to. Okay, guys, her stupid commercial is over. Let's think of some new mounts to put in the shop. Like it or not, Skinner says we do not determine our own actions. We should stop probing our psyches to understand ourselves and look instead at our external behavior and the environment that has produced it. While Shadowlands was in development, loot boxes came under fire worldwide as governments started investigating this practice in the gaming industry. Whether or not it was because of player feedback from BFA or growing social and legal pressure, Shadowlands took gearing into a slightly different direction. And although we still had a weekly loot box, more power was put into players' hands to progress their character. But now with progress being more controlled by players and not by luck, the game needed a way to keep players logged on. Remember, the game needs to last forever. It couldn't be corruption though, that was too obvious. It had to be something more discreet. So, in order to keep players always wanting more, gear became fractured like it never had before. And with this fracturing, a new problem started to emerge. In 9.1, PvP gear has 12 different rankings split between Honor and Conquest. Honor gear can be upgraded no matter what you're rating, but requires up to Renown 59. At the lowest rank, your Honor gear will scale up to 190 item level in PvP. Conquest pieces cap out at 259, which means there are 12 different versions of the same item, and only one is best in slot. If you are a new player or are trying to gear an alt, you will now be at a massive disadvantage the moment you press join battle. Not only will you have to fight better opponents, but you will have to fight against their gear, and in some extreme cases, that means they are 50% stronger than you. To show how absurd this looks, if you want to get your best in slot bracer starting from scratch in Shadowlands, you will have to grind upgrades for that slot 12 different times before it becomes Biss. But in older expansions, if you wanted your best in slot bracer, you could just walk up and buy it without ever needing to queue arena, no upgrades needed. To be able to compete in Arena, you need to stay up with the pack. If you miss one week of queues and fail to loot your vault, you are behind instantly, no catching up. The vault is not an option, it's mandatory to stay competitive. It takes 20 full weeks to grind all of your conquest gear without it. So if you fail to cap week after week, or if you come into the season late, that could be 4 entire months of being behind. Combine that with rating requirements on upgrades, a renowned grind, and random conduit rewards, the gearing disparity grows, and as time goes on, the login button becomes more about work than it does about play. Data from Season 1 showed that the average rating in Arena was 1400, meaning the overwhelming majority of players never come close to completing their characters. This is the section of players that gets access to 2100 gear. This is the section that doesn't. This problem could affect anyone. It doesn't matter if you were a new player or a multi-rank 1 BlizzCon champion. Being undergeared in PvP was and still is a massive problem. Unfortunately, it was the average player that got hurt the most. The average player doesn't have rank 1 achievements or a full list of friends to queue with, and sometimes their progression is limited to a demoralizing LFG grind. Their character can never be complete, it will never feel whole, and logging in will only remind them of that. PvE has its own set of gearing problems too, and you can't just jump immediately into mythic raids, but at least PvE gives you some form of progression where you don't feel like you're losing over and over. There is no raid finder, normal, heroic, and mythic progression in raided arena. There is only one instance, one zone, one ladder, and a few maps. For alts and new players, sometimes the only option is to lose over and over until you can actually progress, and with rating requirements on gear, spam losing is a double-edged sword. It will make games easier eventually, but will put you behind against the rest of the pack. We trust game designers to create experiences that make us feel good about ourselves. Losing over and over does not make us feel happy. Missing out on vault loot is not fun. Warforging and corruption never went away, they just evolved into new methods to make the grind last forever. And eventually, the veil was lifted. The player base could only be fooled so many times, so many of them quit. Sometimes it feels like we are participating in a social experiment and not a game. 
I think it's clear that we like getting rewards, but we also like to feel respected. But is respect possible when players are treated like an experiment? We like to feel rewarded for our effort, but we also like to press play from time to time. But in Shadowlands, the press play button has a month-long loading bar if you start the game late. And despite catch-up systems, it feels impossible to actually catch up. There will always be something keeping you behind. Completion is never really possible. We've been told by developers over and over what makes us feel happy. The next patch is trying to solve some of these issues by reducing gear gaps and including some catch-up systems. But is this just a band-aid on a much larger wound? There have been a few changes to try and make catching up easier or reducing the power level between players, but often these changes feel too little and too late. As Holinka would say in his interview with Vinruki, gearing feels good when everyone is rising at the same time. This works well at the beginning of an expansion, but as time goes on, these systems become more difficult to navigate. And for PvP to survive, there needs to be ways to make the game better for all players, but especially those who are just starting out. They are the ones who can help keep PvP alive. They don't care about corruption gear, conduit energy, or stat priority. They just want to play, but sometimes being undergeared feels like playing a completely different game. We have had many different gearing systems. Some of them felt better than others. But for many players in the PvP community, we just want one thing, and that is to press play. Gear might be one form of progression, but so is skill. But sometimes these two things compete against each other when they really shouldn't. And no matter what we are progressing, we need groups of people to level up. Outcomes in games can be predetermined, and sometimes that's good. Remember, we are programmed to like randomness. But no matter what expansion we're playing, whether or not we are doing PvE or PvP, whether we are just starting out, or if we are one of the best players in the world, there's one thing we hope is not left up to chance, and that is the hope that our friends will be there with us. Hey guys, first of all, thanks for all the comments you gave us on our last commentary upload. Again, this video is a bit different than what we normally produce, and we really value your feedback. And if you want to help support the channel, feel free to subscribe. Regardless of whether or not you are a new player or have been playing WoW for a decade, we're here for the community and we try to make content for all of you. As always though, thanks for watching, see you next time.